Okay, so we've got question five here, and we've got a network, and it says in our question the following. It says figure four represents a railway network. The number on each arc represents the length in miles of that section of the railway. Sophie needs to travel along each section to check it, it is in good condition. She must travel along each arc of the network at least once and wants to find the minimum length. She will start and finish at A. So what that's telling us is um, we are trying to solve the problem, the Chinese postman problem or the route inspection problem, starting and finishing at A. It says use the route inspection algorithm to find the arc that will need to be traversed twice. You must make your method and your working clear for five marks. The first thing you always do with these questions is to list out each of the nodes and list out the order of each node. So do a little table for this. So for part A, always start like this. Node and the order. And another word for order is also valency. So okay, just in case you ever see that word. So nodes, let's go for the nodes. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Okay, and the order is how many arcs coming out. So for A, it's one, two, three. So the order is three. For B, it's one, two, three. So the order is three. For C, it's one, two, three, four. For D, it's one, two, three, four, five. For E, it's one, two, three, four, five. For F, it's one and two. For G, it's one, two, three, and four. And for H, it's one and two. Now, the nodes that we really care about are the odd ones. So because this one's odd, this one's odd, this one's odd, and this one's odd, we need to make all these odd nodes even and create ourselves an Eulerian graph from which we can start and finish at A. So there are odd nodes. Our odd nodes are A, B, um, not C, but uh, D and E. There are odd nodes. So here are our options. So always state your working, show your working like this. So we've got option one. We could pair A up with B, in which case C would have to go, uh, sorry, D would have to go with E. Okay, let's do option two, option two. A could go with D, in which case B would have to go with E. Okay, I'm just going to move that over a little bit here. That's option two. And clearly you can see what option three is going to be. Option three. Well, A, if, it, if it's not with B and not with D, it must be with E. So A must go with E, in which case B goes with D, like that, okay? Now, they're the options. They're not the actual um, arcs that will be traversed necessarily because there may not be an arc directly between A and B. So underneath, how do we get from A to B in the quickest? Well, we can either go 47 or we could go via C, 24 and 20, which is actually 44. So obviously we're gonna go the shortest route. So getting from A to B is actually, we would go A to C and we would go C to B. Now A to C is 24 and C to B is actually 20. That uh, 44 is better than 47. So it's, you must choose the shortest. D to E, how would we get from D to E? Well, we could go 30 or we could go 12 and 20 which is 32, or we could go 18 and 15, which is 33. It seems to me the shortest is directly. So D to E would be the shortest in this case, which would be equal to 30. And if we took that option, um, what would our total extra be? So let's have a column for total. 24 add 20 is 44, add 30 is equal to 74. Right, let's go for option two now, A to D. Okay, so if A had to go with D instead, let's think about how we do that. If I had to go with A to D. Now I could either go 48, or I could go 24, and I could go 18. Now 24 and 18 is actually 42, which is much better. There's no other route around the houses that would be better than that. So we go via C, so we go A, C to D. So to get to, to D, we would go A to C and C to D. A to C, we said, was 24 and 18, so it would be 24 
and 18, like that. Now, how would we get from B to E? Well, we could either go directly 47, or we could go 20 and the 15. No other route is, is really better. So 20 and the 15 is 35. That's way better than 47. So we go B, C, C, E. So we go B to C and C to E, which we said would have been 20 and 15. So 20 and 15. Now, what, what's the total, therefore, with this? Well, the total uh, would be 24, add 18, add 20, add 15, and that's 77. So we would add an extra 77 there. Let's have a look at option 3 now. Option 3 is A to E. How would we get from A to E in the quickest possible way? So, i.e. from here to here. 47 and 47, that seems rather large. 48 and 30, that seems large. Or 24 and 15, that seems the best option to me. So we would go AC and CE. So we would go AC and CE, which we said would be 24 and 15. So 24 and 15. And then we have to go from B to D. So we have to go from B here to D. 47 and 48, 47 and 30, or directly 20 and 18. So we're going to go via C. Uh, via C 20 and 18. So we're going to go B to C and C to D 20 and 18. If we add those up, we've got ourselves 24, add the 15, add the 20, add the 18, and we've got ourselves 77. Now, which one is going to be the best to traverse twice? Well, this option here is going to be the best to traverse twice because it adds the shortest amount. So 74, it adds only 74. So which arcs, let's state which arcs need to be traversed twice. So this is where we state that. So let's state arcs to be traversed twice, arcs to be traversed twice are AC, CB and DE. Okay, so we've done the first part. You must make your working clear. Use the route to find the arcs. That's all we need to do here. Now, part B, write down the shortest possible route inspection route given its length. So we must write down the shortest possible uh, inspection route. So we have to state the route we're going to go and state the length. So for part B, the length is the easy bit. Get the easy mark to start with. The length, well, the length of the whole thing is 344. We're adding 74 to that to show you're working. 344, add the 74. So we would just do 344 add 74. So 344 add 74 is going to be 418 and it's miles. So 418 miles. Okay. 418 miles like that. Now, the next thing we have to do, we have to state the, the route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw in my arcs on here. So we've chosen option one. We're going to repeat A, C, and C, B. So A, C, we're going to repeat that like as follows. C, B, we're going to repeat that as follows. And D, E, we're going to repeat that as follows. Now everything should be even. We should be able to start and finish at A really, really easy. So let's have a go at doing it. Let's go A to D. Let's say to F, to G, and then back to D. So let's write that down as we do it. So we've gone A to D to F to G, back to D. Now let's start off where we were at. So now why don't we try going uh, back down to E, up to G, so back down to E, up to G, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go H to E, so we're going to go H to E, H to E, um, and now we're going to go back up to D, let's say, why not? It doesn't matter. Back up to D, down to C, back up to D, down to C, and we're nearly there now. Let's go E, B, C. So we're gonna go E, E, B, and C, and let's just take it home from there. Let's go A to C, A to C, and that should be enough to get us home now. B to A, and B to A. Now, you don't have to think too much about it at all when you're doing these ones. They should work out really nicely for you. Um, but 
obviously you've got to just record them as you go along. Otherwise it's gonna be hard to keep track of. So I'm just gonna paste that there as my route. So I'm gonna write there, that is my possible route. So one mark for each of those. Okay, so let's have a look at the next part, part C. It says, Sophie now decides to start the inspection route at E. She wants to start at E. The route must traverse each arc at least once, but can finish at any vertex. Okay, determine the finishing point so the length of the route is minimized. You must state the reasons for your answer. Now, we don't, we doubled this up when she had to start and finish at A. However, now no longer does she have to start and finish A. So those extra arcs we drew in are not required anymore. All we need to know is that she wants to start at E. That means E can stay odd. Now the question is what other one needs to stay odd. If E must stay odd, okay, if E must stay odd, we won't double it up. So we will not have a look at this one as an option. We will not double it up, add an extra arc because it will go even. So that one we will not look at. We will also not look at this one because this would double up E and make it even. And we wouldn't look at this one either, okay? So the question is, out of the others, which is the smallest possible addition? These two add to 44, these two here add to 42, and these two here add to 38. Now this is the smallest. So it means I should double up B and D. Okay, so what I'm gonna write is, since we start at E, E must remain odd. Okay, so uh, E will not be in an arc we traverse twice, okay? Looking at the options above, BD should be traversed twice, Therefore, B and D will be even. This leaves, well, what does that leave odd? Obviously, E must be odd, but A is left odd. Therefore, A is left odd. Okay, so the question was, determine the finishing point. So A is the finishing point. But it did say in the question, it said, uh, you must give reasons for your answer and state the length of the route. So we must state the length of the route. So length of route. Well, the whole thing was, remember it was three, four, four. So three, four, four. We've decided to actually um, double up this here. So we're only adding 38. So we add on the extra 38. And we do the 344 add the 38. So 344 add the 38 is going to equal to 382 miles. So 382 miles. And there we go, we're done with this question.